Recorded live. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be across the nation or around the world. Once again, you're listening to the VMware Communities Roundtable Podcast. This is podcast number 654. My name is Eric Nelson, and with me today, I have my regular co-host, Matt Lunga. Today is Wednesday, July 19th, 2023. Matt, how's it going? I don't hear Matt. Hmm. Just clicking. Well, that's okay. We'll get started anyway. I'm assuming Matt will go back. It looks like Matt is muted on the on the screen here. So maybe Matt will get unmuted. In the meantime, uh, we are going to have a great podcast here. We are today here with uh, David and Kelly. Uh, we'll get to them in an introduction in a moment or two, but uh, we're going to be talking about HOL at Explore. Explore's ramping up in Vegas, and so we're excited about that. We're going to talk to David and Kelly about Odyssey, uh, HOL, everything that's going on with Hands-On Labs. And as we all know, Hands-On Labs are some of the favorite things that people do when they go to Explore. Super excited about that. Uh, in the meantime, let's talk a little bit about the news The for Explore. Everything is Explore now. Uh, we've all got our hotel rooms. We're all excited to be there. I think it's less than four weeks away. And what I would say, or maybe it's four weeks, something like that, or four, five, four and a half, five, excited to, to be talking about it because uh, everything's coming together. The uh, code labs have been sold out where we're doing chat GPT, uh, REST APIs, how to write your own uh, chat GPT client. Um, that'll be fun. We did manage to get another 100 seats over the course of the four days. So we'll be opening them up in Schedule Builder. So watch for that. If you didn't get uh, a code lab, you can uh, watch for that. We'll be opening those up sometime next week, I think. And so uh, you should be able to get a seat if you haven't gotten, you know, gotten one already. The Community Hub booth is all built out. We got Alistair Cook and one of the V Brown Bag engineers coming to do all the live streams of the community talks at the community theater. We got the code theater booked out. Uh, excited about that. Uh, we are going to have the espresso bar this year. So if you want to come hang with us and uh, do a couple tasks around the booth, you'll be able to get an espresso token. Cohesity is helping sponsor the espresso booth. So we got uh, espressos. That was a big hit in 2019 because everybody wants a good coffee, not just a uh, a piece of conference coffee, but actually they're going to have flavors, hazelnut, you know, you name it. They're going to be able to build, make it, and we'll have the espresso bar open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we're excited about that. Um, we also have um, uh, a little studio. So if you want to book a studio, uh, look for that online. You can get, get some studio time to record a video in front of a backdrop. So that's going to be fun. VMUG is going to be in the booth this year. We've got uh, blogger tables. We've got a VMUG booth. Uh, so everything coming together. Really excited about the whole space. That's in the hang space uh, or what they call the hub. The hub is going to have other things. Uh, the champions program is going to be in the hub. There's going to be other things in the hub. So really looking like a great event. And of course, the hackathons Monday night. You can go register for the hackathon, uh, get on a team. I think they're going to have like 10 teams. You can drop on a team. We're going to have food. It's going to be Monday night. It's actually going to be Monday from noon until midnight. So I'm excited about that because uh, it's all day. So Monday, if you want to, you know, spend time with some friends or team members or just learn how to code or be around people that do know how to code, uh, sign up for the hackathon. Uh, we will be there from noon until midnight. There will be prizes. There'll be trophies. We're excited about the whole thing. And we will be giving everyone a T-shirt, a traditional code T-shirt. We're purchasing them. So looking forward to the hackathon. And then on Tuesday night, the community party at the Pinball Museum. Uh, everybody's going to be there. It's a journey to get there. So we'll have a map on how to take the tram and then another tram and then walk across the street and down two blocks. So you'll be able to walk there if you want, or you can always just get some friends and come down to the Pinball Museum. I visited the Pinball Museum in Vegas uh, two weeks ago. It is fantastic. It's a giant compared to the old days. So we're excited about that. We will have some food and drink. Alcohol is being served as well as uh, 
as some kind of food. We either have pizza or something else. So excited about that. So that's what we got going on. And so uh, let's get to our guests. We're going to talk about HOL, which is my second favorite thing to be doing. So uh, Kelly Smith, will will hit up you first. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and how long you've been at uh, VMware and what's your career arc like? And then we'll get to David. Sure. So I've been at VMware for four years. Um, all of those years have been spent in the hands-on labs. And prior to that, I was in the hardware space since I was about 18 years old. Um, love engineering. I started at a crystal and oscillator manufacturer and moved my way up through boards and finally to chassis. And then I thought, you know, let's go check out the software side of things. So here I am. You know, that's fascinating because uh, I'm almost going the opposite direction. Started in software, a software engineer, operating systems. Uh, then I ended up in marketing uh, for community building and that kind of stuff. But um, uh, my son's a hardware engineer and I like hardware engineering. And so ORCAD and, you know, laying out stuff and chip specs and all that is kind of like new and fun. I have a buddy that's got the same thing. He he did software and now he's doing construction like you know he he, he oh, hit wow. his 55 60 year old kind of like maybe i should do something different and i think there's this there's a trend where you you spend 10 or 15 years in one tech field and then you just want to try something different right so uh, it sounds like that happened to you maybe i don't know but definitely uh, yes. yeah, yeah I mean, uh, David, uh, your last name is D. Et Entremont, I guess we would say it. You, you can give us the right pronunciation, but uh, why don't you tell us a little about who, who you are and what's your, what's your uh, career arc look like? Thank you. So uh, D. Entremont is the perfect Americanization uh, of that, so uh, feel free to use that. But if you want to practice your French, you're more than welcome to. Uh, I actually started out of uh, out of school doing computer drafting and design, focusing on architecture, uh, residential architecture primarily. And then uh, at some point, uh, I was doing contract work, and I was looking for something with insurance. And a buddy of mine said, "Hey, um, I work in IT. We're about to get rid of this guy here because he keeps turning servers off instead of just logging into them. And we're looking for somebody we can train to do something. Were you interested in a career change? I was like, well, do you have insurance? He said, yeah, we do. So I thought, well, maybe it's time for a career change. So I got into that. That started me down the road of server administration, network administration, just about the time virtualization was starting to be something that people use for production workloads. And so eventually that led me over to joining VMware around 2010. And I joined as a, uh, a architect that was supporting partner solutions uh, within VMware and then started focusing on our cloud uh, products within the VMware. And then a few years ago, I moved over to the hands-on labs team and uh, just loving it here in the hands-on labs. Nice, nice. Well, great. And I, I see that uh, I can't really say much about that. I mean, you came in and in, in the IT and now you're in IT and now you're in a HOL. There's no, no big revolution other than you did have a kind of a career migration. So we're going to give you some time before you make your next major jump, which I somebody was telling me offline that it's just going to be hot air ballooning or something like that. So, you know, we'll, we'll stay tuned for that. Right. <laughs> I made that up, but uh, anyway, Matt uh, Longeth, maybe Matt is on. I see he's back in here. So, Matt, uh, welcome back to the show. Um, how's where are you, and how's 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 things up where you're at? Hi, Eric. Uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, we are broadcasting from the remote studio in downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania today. After meeting with some uh, banking customers here and talking about horizon cloud adoption so i am well it is sticky and hot probably 80 high 80s if not low 90s here uh in the great city of pittsburgh with high humidity there's also some of that uh, unfortunate canadian wildfire smoke and smog <laughs> that is still entering the area so that's very much prevalent uh, I, my favorite question, sir, out there, uh, I know I'm late to the party here on today's particular episode, but I hope you were doing well. Uh, how are all things out on the West Coast and uh, what is the color of the bay today? Well, let me tell you, it is, uh, it is, it is fun out on the West Coast right now. The, the world is opening back up, I think. Uh, we're, I'm on campus. We're doing an MLAI symposium and council meeting today. And there's a lot of exciting stuff coming out of AI and ML. So, you know, if you're not coming to explore, you should go talk to your boss and, and, and change their minds because uh, there's going to be some great content announcements 
direction, uh, NVIDIA, others all doing AI, ML, whole ecosystem. Man, I've been getting so exposed to some stuff that I'm like, this is this is this is game changing. So uh, if I were sitting listening to this podcast and I wasn't coming to explore, I might change my mind and come because there's going to be some great stuff coming out of this. And it, it uh, does it, it does bring back vSphere. As far as the weather goes, it's, it's been pretty and uh, nice. Not too hot this summer so far. Knock on wood. Uh, been beautiful in the 70s today. Sunny and nice. So getting some nice California weather finally. Uh, which I'm happy with. And the color of the bay is just a nice green. It is nice green, warm, sunny, not too hot, not too cold. Enjoying that. So, uh, Matt, I know about those. Uh, I grew up in Ohio. The muggy summers of the, the Northeast can be sweltering in a different way that I can't really describe unless you've lived through it. It feels like you can barely breathe and you just want to sit there and try to stay alive. So I'm glad you're on the podcast. I know that weather well. Well, you know, of course, uh, we have to talk about the Vegas weather. I know that uh, downtown this week, it was about 115, 117, something on the strip. So that's weather in and of itself. But one of the ways to stay cool and also cons consume some of that great content that's out there, of course, would be the hands-on labs and all of those activities that are coming to explore for both U.S. and Barcelona. And our guests today uh, will dive into that with. So... Now, without further ado, uh, let's uh, let's talk hands-on labs and see what's coming for Explore. Yeah, so so Kelly and David, thank you for your introductions. Um, who would like to go first? And let's talk a little about about HOL this year. You know, any kind of themes or any kind of uh, things that uh, that you guys are thinking about, or maybe uh, most people listening to this podcast know about HOLs, but maybe you could do a minute of HOLs, what it's like, and what are you guys going for this year? Sure. So HOLs, if you're not familiar, is a tool that anyone can use anywhere with a browser to test and try out any of our VMware products. So we cover every product that VMware makes. It's free. There's nothing to download. You can access it from a browser. Simple. Play it. Play in the uh, NRV pods like a sandbox. Everything's destroyed at the end. So it's just basically a way to get your hands literally on our products without having to buy them. So that's what hands-on labs are. Um, this year at Explore, we have a room that is twice the size that it was at the U.S. show last year, if you were able to join us. So we have added some of our expert-led workshop rooms, some additional rooms in there um, to allow us to share more content, since that, that is our most popular attraction. Um, we, of course, are bringing back our self-paced labs. Um, we have our command center wall, which is the uh, VMware on VMware monitoring of our room in real time, if you're interested in seeing how, how products work in, in the real world. Um, we have our tours. And of course, we have Odyssey returning again. So I will hand it over to David to talk about Odyssey. You're muted, David. Thank you. Odyssey is certainly becoming a popular uh, part of the event. Uh, a few years ago, debuting uh, to uh, no small amount of excitement for everyone. But uh, Odyssey is the chance to come in and kind of validate your learning. Hands-on Labs always been a great environment for learning about the products, how to use them, how to solve problems, how to fix things when they're broken, as well as how to break things can be valuable as well. Uh, but uh, Odyssey was kind of that uh, that way to validate that you actually are learning uh, and that you know what you think you know. And then, uh, you know, it's uh, always good to have a prize and to see how your knowledge uh, stacks up against others as well. So the Odyssey competition will be back uh, for uh, for Explore this year. So, so if I remember right, I think the last time I saw Odyssey was again the year before the pandemic hit us, so 2019, and then last year was our first in, back in person, but I don't think we did Odyssey then. But now you're saying, yep, yeah, your guys are investing big time for HOL, bigger, better than last year, and then Odyssey's back as well, right? So that's, yeah. Yeah, we, we did have Odyssey back last year, but it wasn't in the same room. So it was, it was at a different location there. Uh, but this year, we're all going to be back together in, in the same room there with an Odyssey stage uh, ready to go. So uh, br bring uh, br bring your game because uh, real prize is on the line. So let me ask a couple of questions because I'm trying to remember Odyssey. Like I, I thought like Odyssey was kind of like team play. 
Is it a team and individual or do I, should I have to join a team? What's the, what's the operational model of how to do this? Yeah, that was uh, that was how it was debuted was a team type competition uh, to where we had some extensive set of tasks and you could rely on your friends uh, to help out there. Uh, but then we found that that really kind of limited who could participate because you had to have a team there. And sometimes you don't always have all your friends with you uh, at the Explore event there that you'd like to be with. So we opened up that game to individual gameplay. And we found that that really opened it up for more people to be involved because it's just just me and I, and I can do this and let me see what I know myself. So this year we're following that same model of individual gameplay. Anybody can come and play any game at any time. And you don't have to play them all, uh, but uh, play as much as you want. But the more you play, the, the better your chance to make that final 10. Yeah, I felt it, that way. Yep. All right. That makes sense. I felt like when uh, in 2019 I was hovering around the Odyssey and I felt like I didn't have a chance because these great teams were all formed already and they were playing. And I'm like, eh, I couldn't even, I couldn't even, I couldn't, I felt embarrassed to even sign up or do anything because I'd have to be on a team and I'd be the, I'd be the guy that with the in gaming world, they call it the heavy, right? Everybody has to carry this poor heavy guy because he's, he's not very good. And like, but you got carry members and you got heavy members, right? And it's like, I'm like, I'm not doing this, but individuals make a lot more sense because then I'm just playing against my own self, my own records. Can I get in the top 100? That kind of thing is for me a lot more fun because, you know, I'm just seeing where I land on a leaderboard, which is a lot more fun. Than... Kelly, you nodded and you were going to add to the conversation. I was just going to say that um, you want to play every day because that gives you more chances of making the top 10 and the top 10 are the ones who get to compete on that final day in the tournament so the tournament yeah. set up a little differently yeah i would say that this feels a, a lot like disney world right where I, in the old days you used to get your your tickets right you know your little bass tickets you guys are probably maybe you're too young for this but you know you get this book of tickets and there's an a ticket a b ticket a c ticket a d ticket and an e ticket right and since my name is eric i always thought the e was the best and it was the best you could go on any ride with an e ticket and i feel like now explore is one of these things where you have to covet your time right and how much you want to spend where because there's you know there's code labs over in the hub right those are fun you know geeky hardware kind of stuff because that's what we like to do if you have code or programming and then you got the hols which are great learning you got certifications you can do, but then you have things like Odyssey, which is okay. Then I also want to do sessions. So you're in this space of, you know, having to choose, you know, your, your schedule carefully because there's a lot of really neat stuff. And that's one of those things that we shouldn't probably let gambling addicts uh, show up too much. We should have a limit on Odyssey because they'll they'll burn all their time. The boss said, "What did you get done? What did you do?" And I'm like, uh, "I was in the top ten leaderboard for Odyssey. That 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 counts, doesn't it?" It, it does. And that, that's a valid point uh, that there is a lot to do. So what we do with the Odyssey tournament is it's open for as long as hands-on labs is. So anytime the HOL room is open, Odyssey is open. And the games to come in and play, they are designed to be quick. They're not designed to take a long time to do. So those first few days of taking those games, if you've got 10 minutes, 15 minutes, come in and take a challenge, you know, three to four quick tasks, get in and get out. So we try to make it easy to fit those spaces in between those valuable sessions everybody wants to go to. And if you're not familiar with the topic of the day, the topic du jour, um, you, we always have a lab going on in the hands-on labs area that you can go to take and brush up on that content and take your new knowledge over to Odyssey. Yeah. So Kelly, to, I'm sorry, to that end, when we talk, let's using gaming parlance, would these focus on particular, you know, BU product types uh, for, for day to day or the different, uh, you know, quests would be focused on things like maybe core vSphere as opposed to modern apps or security or maybe even e the EUC product set? How do how have you the the team determined um, or what's what's some of these you know potential tracks that are out there for some of these quests if you can speak to that? Well, uh, I I was going to ask ChatGPT and hopefully <laughs> ChatGPT come up with an answer for that. But uh, the honest answer is that uh, what we do is we try to make it a mixture of different uh, BUs, different product sets, and different challenges, so that uh, really to be the Odyssey champion you have to have a good understanding across the range of products and solutions that uh, VMware has. So if you're a real specialist in vSphere, that's great. Come and kill the vSphere-based lab. 
come and do that. But also make sure you take some time to understand some of the other products and solutions that are there as well. Specifically, what topics are available on what day? We're going to wait until the event to tell you there because uh, we we want to we want to throw a few surprises in there. Uh, nothing too left field, uh, but uh, every day you'll be able to come up and find out what the challenge is for that day. You'll have plenty of time to go learn, take the HOL, go talk to an expert. That's another great thing about HOL. Sorry to take a little tangent here because hands-on labs are available online 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Why would you do that at Explore? It's because you have the experts in the room. You have the one, the, the ones that wrote those labs, that wrote those manuals, that built the V-Pods. And if you wanna ask a technical question about what you see there, the people that wrote it are right there beside you. So the 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 value of having those those individuals in the room accessible to you, make sure that you then have enough understanding to 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 firm up whatever skills you need to, so that whatever the challenge of the day is, you're good to go. Even if you've never used the product before, taking the hands-on lab for it will prep you for it. We had individuals last year that were doing some things for the first time, and they were scoring pretty high on the board. Yeah, it's, it is interesting. Um, just out of the blue, I uh, had an a employee that uh, we've been working on some skill development. And uh, one of the things we wanted to do was, you know, get them up to speed on vSphere. So we went and took a vSphere lab together, right? And it is interesting, just a basic getting started vSphere lab, right? I still, have, even though I've run vSphere since vSphere 3, right? And I got vSphere 6.5, I got 7, I've got, I've gotten, I, I, I still had questions when I was doing this lab that I was like, wait, what do they want me to do next right here? Like, and so it is really good, especially if you just haven't spent time with the tech as much as you think, then uh, for certain it's, it's, it's really good to have those instructors in the lab. And then I don't know, I, I'm sure you have the works, workshop led labs. Are those all sold out by now? I mean, I, I find that a lot of the workshop stuff goes pretty quick, but you do have those as well, right? Which is a, is a different animal altogether, but it's the same premise where you actually have a human that you can engage with on a particular topic. Yeah, so we we have our expert led workshops and they're, they're in the catalog right now. Um, a lot of them are filled up, but I, there are other ways to talk to experts in our room without going to a workshop. So we will release more seats and sessions in the coming weeks. We look at what's most popular and that's where we add more seats and sessions. So if there's something you can't get into, definitely try back. Um, this year, we will also be debuting these pop-up workshops. So the most popular workshop from Monday is going to be offered again on Tuesday for folks that will can sign up cannot sign up before Monday night. So anyone who maybe registered for the event late and didn't quite get into the, the workshop that they wanted, there's going to be an opportunity to do that um, based solely on popularity at the show itself. And then if, if the workshop times don't work for you, the self-paced labs is staffed by those same subject matter experts that wrote the labs. They're the same subject matter experts that are teaching those expert-led workshops. They are wandering around the self-paced labs room. If you have a question, raise your hand. They'll come over, deep dive with you, talk technical, answer any questions you might have. Um, the self-paced labs do not require any reservations. You don't have to sign up for them. If we're open, self-paced labs are open and 95% of our workshop content is available in the self-paced labs area. So if the workshop schedule doesn't work, just stop by and someone will help you find something fun to do. I got an obvious question, um, which is, are you guys open on Monday? When, when are you guys kicking off the labs? We open Monday at 9 a.m. Monday at 9 a.m. That's great because I don't think the hackathon doesn't start till noon and uh, booth stuff doesn't start till like one or two. So if you get there early, you know, or come in on Saturday night, no, Sunday night, you can uh, you can hit the ground running Sunday, uh, Monday morning and get some time before everything else fills up the e-ticket ride. So that's, that's awesome. And we're like, located, we're located like, through the hub this year. You got to walk like, through the hub. So other two topics that I have uh, that, that, that since we have you here, one is uh, any hot labs and then two infrastructure, like uh, how are you running things these years? So maybe we'll do hot labs first. You know, sometimes there were always hot labs, you know, back in the day it was networking and uh, then it was security. Maybe in the last year or two security was pretty hot. Do you guys have visibility of what the hot labs are this year? 
We do. We do. Based on uh, people liking our labs and signing up for workshops, um, Tanzu, the Aria Suite, everything vSphere, of course, um, vSAN, containers and Kubernetes and NSX seem to be the top runners at the moment. We will also possibly have a secret ML AI lab released that is not quite finished yet. Yeah, there you go. That one's going to be, yeah, you're going to have to get like a hall of a 10,000 people, right? <laughs> as soon as you do this, like everybody, it is sweeping the Bay Area, the tech you can't get, escape without AI and ML. Of course, I'm at an AI ML conference day, so that may, you know, it's, it's, a, it's in my brain. But I think that, you know, your, your top, the top list there is classically what VMware is known for. And I feel like the pendulum is swimming, swinging back into vSphere, NSX, uh, Aria management, right? Uh, and then Tanzu, modern apps, right? And it's, it, it is grounded. And uh, most people I talk to when I'm in vMugs and user cons, that's what they're telling me. It's like, hey, you know, we still run our core products here. You know, and so it, it does make sense. Um, anybody hear any reg numbers yet? I have not heard any reg numbers for the whole show. Uh, mm -hmm. I usually get a hold of that and I sneak peek some things sometimes, but I know we hit our, you know, we hit a good number, you know, maybe weeks ago, like four weeks ago, 3000, but I haven't heard since like, so I'm gonna have to go find out like. We're, we're, we're north of 6,000 at the moment. Oh, nice. All right. There you go. Right. And I think our, our target's like 10 or something. And we're still, we're still, we still haven't hit the hockey puck curve yet. So that bodes well for getting good people involved. And what I would say is based on the sneaky AIML, the not talking about it scenarios yet, um, there should be some fun stuff. I think our code lab was the only one where we actually released something, AI, you know, with chat GPT and all of a sudden it was full. So um it, it is it is good it should be fun i think this is going to be a really fun fun year this year so let's talk uh david um back end uh, you know I, I remember the old days you know when we had i think at one point we put racks down in moscone and we had these big racks and we had the machines buzzing right there and then we had white you know <laughs> fiber or whatever lines to get over to, so we did this and it was like this kind of cool thing we did. And then uh, over time we stopped doing that because it was a nightmare to set all that up in 38 hours, right? Ever when you get into Masconi. Then uh, you know, over time we've kind of had this cloud back end and sometimes I remember, I don't remember it was VMware Air or something we did for about one year or something. Maybe we did a little hybrid cloud, I don't know. It seems like we bounced between cloud providers. What are we doing this year? Well. First of all, we have the same challenge everybody does in the community. We need more resources. The things that we're being asked to do and the labs that we're being asked to build just require more resources. And our internal teams that are developing the labs, they not only want those resources, they want them faster. And so we've started with internally, even our development environment, we've had to, to, to make sure that that is properly resourced as well. Just the continued growth makes that a challenge. And then once you get to the show, doing that at scale, again, continues to be a challenge. So we use a mixture of clouds uh, that, uh, that VMware owns and controls. And we also have resources out on Amazon as well. So we do spread our resources out geographically across multiple clouds so that uh, we're spreading it out across geographies, which brings some complexity to, uh, in and of itself. And, and, and you might think, well, just add a whole bunch of other clouds and that would make it easier. Well, well, here's a reason why that does make, make a, a challenge for us is that once these pods are developed, you end up with a very large quantity of storage that makes up that pod. And while it, that may run very well in this cloud over here to move that from one cloud to another, that takes a long time. That replication of all that data takes some time to do. And then if we make a change on one of those pods, need to make an adjustment there, um, sometimes you'd have to replicate a good chunk, if not all of that data again. So the the what we try to do is make sure that we're, we're using uh, clouds that have a good amount of capacity, so we are spreading out the workload, but we're not spreading it in so many small chunks that it takes so long to do all that replication across clouds. 
So in the years past, we have had other cloud providers that have sponsored some cloud uh, capacity as well. So all, if any of you are listening on the podcast here and you would like to be acknowledged for providing some cloud capacity, I'm sure we would uh, like to have a conversation with you. But uh, yeah, we, we, we do have uh, and use cloud storage uh, to deliver these labs. And, and keep in mind too, the public labs are available at the same time. We're not shutting anything down from the public lab. So the team that runs this, the clouds that are running it, they're running the standard day-to-day hands-on lab workload that's available 27 and a show with 6,000 of your closest friends at the same time. So you're really seeing the power of cloud. Properly managed cloud is powerful and, and it works. Great. Hey, Matt, um, why don't you ask some questions? I have to go get my power supply. <laughs> I'm a two percent at left. So we t- we talked about the infrastructure side of how we're hosting the pods, but I'm curious of what we're doing out on the edge. We're actually delivering the labs themselves. So can we get into a little bit as far as what that infrastructure might look like and how we look at both an HA and DR perspective? For example, at you know, uh, the Venetian, are we looking at multiple pathways or multiple internet service providers? Should we lose a leg out to, you know, public internet access? How have we started to, you know, design for edge access to these different cloud providers within that space? Yeah, so for the delivery of the labs, we use the VMware lab platform. Um, that is a VMware product that's been around for several years, and that's one that uh, we still make available to customers as well. But that's what delivers these labs to the individual users. That's what the funnels everything through the web browser uh, to make sure that they have the manual on that side, and they also have the the pod there. Now, to to make all this happen with multiple clouds, the lab platform is able to take cloud resources, group them into pools and then able to direct users to across multiple pools. So we can balance workloads across pools. Um, we can uh, dial down if a, if a cloud or a location is having a problem, we can take that capacity offline. Users are automatically redirected to other resources there. Now we, we do try to intelligently uh, keep users as close as we can to the clouds that they're running on. So for example, for a show in the United States, we're, we're really going to use our, our, our data centers that might be on the other side of the world in Europe. Those are not going to be the primary places we're going to point users to. Though That's kind of the backup there because, uh, you know, physics, the law of physics still apply to hands-on labs. And with that distance, we, we, you know, latency can, can become noticeable at times. So on the back end inside VLP, we're able to balance that across clouds there. Uh, then from the networking side, uh, at the show itself, uh, we have uh, show uh, networking service providers that we work very closely with to make sure that the networking that uh, is is there at the show for all the users, whether that's Wi-Fi or using the devices that we have that are hardwired into their backbone uh, there, that uh, they're managing multiple paths to the internet there. They're making sure that they balance that traffic across uh, users for the show so that uh, all we have to do is invite you in, ask you, hey, which lab did you want to take? We put you down in a chair, you type in your email address, and you're running a hands-on lab at full speed. Our, our room has dedicated Wi-Fi and dedicated internet that's separate from the rest of the show just to ensure that we don't lose any connectivity while we're open. And, and the devices themselves, so if, we, if an individual would choose to use a, a VMware-provided device to walk through either the, you know, the Odyssey scenarios or the hands-on labs. Is that a, you know, a thin client? Is that a Windows 10 device? And then how do we deploy and configure that? Are are we consuming Workspace ONE services? Or is that a a Horizon stack that's out there? What's the the endpoint configuration for, you know, even just the browser delivery? What's that look like? We are using uh, many PCs in the self-paced labs, well, actually in every room, expert-led and Odyssey, and they're all hardwired in, and they are managed using uh, Workspace ONE to configure. That's all set up uh, the day before the show starts on Sunday by our labs. And, it, and the, the uh, V-Pods themselves between HOL and Odyssey, 
is that within the same overall environment or depending on where the workload uh, may lie or what the workload stack may look like between Odyssey and HOL? Is there you know, a line in the sand, so to say, uh, of where that might be taken into consideration? Yeah, so part of the design of how the VPods have been structured is to be able to serve multiple labs from a single pod so that uh, we could have one pod that's ready to go at any time. And when a user gets connected to that pod, they say, hey, this is the one that I want to do. I want to do this task in this pod over there. And most of the time, that pod's just ready to go on that task. But we do have this technology called a module switcher where it can say, hey, reconfigure this pod because I'm starting this particular scenario and I need the pod in this condition there to go. So we have a, a method of, of doing that to where we can use the same pod for that. When Odyssey came about, that was one thing that was an important design consideration was we didn't want to have to recreate these pods or create a brand new pod to do an Odyssey game. So we use uh, technology built into v VMware Labs platform and some scripting that the team has developed here so that when a pod starts up, um, I don't know who's going to take this lab yet. I'm just going to start the pod up and I'm going to keep it warm there. I'm going to wait for somebody to say they want to run that pod. And at the time that they link to that pod, if it's an Odyssey game, it tells the pod, hey, by the way, uh, this is Odyssey. And then in the background, the pod will prepare itself for Odyssey. We'll make sure the game client is downloaded. The validation scripts are ready. So a, a, that took a, a lot of thought and a lot of planning, but the efficiencies we've seen allow us to run an event like this at this scale uh, with the few staff that we have, while again, providing this to the public uh, on the public site all at the same time. So one pod can deliver multiple lab scenarios and also an Odyssey game without having to do any manual configuration of that pod based on what, what end it's going to be used for. And Frankly, I always thought that, that the labs platform was VCD on steroids. However, it sounds like it's a much, much more in-depth and entirely separate product um, that has a, a much greater feature set and is well more in depth than even what we have available in, in BCD. Yes, uh, it is. And, and you're going to see a new look this year. Uh, so uh, be be on the lookout for that. And I hope it didn't steal Kelly's thunder. <laughs> or maybe I shouldn't have said that. And Kelly's going to talk to me afterwards. Uh, but you're going to see some new things this year. And and part of that will be we're going to VLP can deliver more than just your 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 dad's VPod. It can deliver a lot more uh, experiences from a variety of different locations. And you're going to be seeing more of that uh, this year. Yeah, VLP is a super powerful platform. They continue to release new features that we are trying to adopt as quickly as they can release them. And by the way, we actually work with the VLP platform because they come to us and they say, you, you know, you're not using this platform like most of our customers use it. And we say, we're not using this platform like most of our customers use it. <laughs> and we talk together about uh, what we think we want to do and what they think they're designing for. And when we talk about what we think we want to do and they bring what they think we what they think we are wanting to do and come together and work together on them, we come out with some great features that we co-develop together. And that relationship is is growing much stronger this year. And we're continuing to 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 kind of start to walk in in the same footprints and the same cadence there. So you'll see a lot more cool things. If you thought it was on steroids at first, just wait. Just wait. As far as resource consumption goes for a particular VPod, what right now is at the top of the list uh, within a, a, a given uh, uh, Odyssey Quest or an HOL? Um, for, for a given pod, what, what's the one that, that you, we really have to be careful of as far as resource consumption that because of the stack and the components that go into it um, of when that gets turned up? Is that still VMware Cloud Foundation, Dave? Um, so that's way up there on the list, uh, but I think competing for that is one of our disaster recovery labs. And when you think about that, that kind of makes sense too, because when you're talking sure. about and, disaster and, recovery uh, scenarios, tons of resources. I'll, I'll, yeah, both endpoints, right? Even if you would just do a, two, a let's call it a two-site recovery, and then of course a nested BCD instance would be uh, pretty impressive with the resources that would require. 
Yeah, but that doesn't mean that others aren't uh, increasing in size. And some of that is, you know, the products themselves with new features, they grow in size. But another part of that too is that we're doing a lot, we're solving a lot more problems with our products. Uh, we're solving a lot more complex problems uh, that require some extra resources to be able to do things. But the gains that uh, you see uh, with that resource spend, you know, show you that uh, it's it's worth it. Once you get that up and running, it becomes very, very powerful. Uh, so even though our pods are growing in size, some are bigger than others, um, you know, they're still valuable and they still show that uh, the, the products and solutions we have out there uh, can certainly help accelerate whatever your end business is, uh, make it faster, make it better, make it easier, make it more consistent. So, and uh, finally, Oh, go ahead. Man. I, I, I want, I want to get a question, but you go, you go first. I, I just, before we turn it back over to Eric with, with uh, his uh, remaining thoughts, I, I, I know that, we always have some great operational dashboards that are out there that, that we did display and you know the number of uh, total VMs concurrently running and, and pods that are, that are out there. Do we have a, a, a target estimate as far as uh, a number of VMs that, that may be deployed or even just to share w where we were at last year as far as a uh, number of VMs that were stood up or just a, if we don't have that information, just an interesting stat uh, that was a takeaway from um, either that last year's overall numbers for the, the event or an expected number of where we're at for workload coming into um, you know this year's uh, activities. Yeah, I don't have those stats right in front of me, but the most interesting stat to me last year at the show was that 85% of the folks who came in and took a lab in our room had never had never taken a lab before. So this is brand new to them. So that was that was the most interesting to me. Um, yeah. We have yeah, that. interesting. I, I, I have a question along those lines, but it's slightly different. On the tour, right? If I were interested in taking the tour, um, do you guys get, do, do, you know, it's like, well, you don't have servers anymore. They're, it's all cloud. I guess I can look at a bright yellow fiber optic line and go, that's what's happening. But do you guys have like data rates or what? What do you get when you take a tour? You get a behind the scenes look into how the how the room operates, some, you know, some information like the, the questions you're asking now about the clouds and the infrastructure behind it. There's a lot that the people who give the tours are our lab staff. They have a lot of in-depth knowledge about how the labs are built, how they're run. Um, we'll take you to each point in the room, the workshops, the self-based labs, Odyssey. We also take you back to the NOC, our network operations center, and you get to talk to um, our performance engineer who is in the room doesn't leave his desk the entire time the show is running and just making sure everything is is going smoothly in the room. Um, we typically end the tour at the command center wall, which is where we show the VMware products in action monitoring the room. Neat, neat. And is that in like a schedule builder? So if I want to do a tour, do I can I put that on my calendar and sign up for the tour as a session? Well, how does that work? There is a session and um, it isn't quite live yet, but it will be in Jiffle now. All right. Good, good, good. All right. So that was one of my questions, which you answered well. Thank you for that one. Um, I hope David has something to add. Yeah. I, I just wanted to say too, the, on those dashboards there, if you want your name to show up on the command center wall, we can make that happen. You're a great sales because, person, David. Oh, I, I, hey, this is, this is legit. Along with all the great data and the dashboards that show all the infrastructure, how everything's working, how everything's running, also the Odyssey leaderboards are going to be up on the command center wall for everybody to see. So if you come in, you start taking the games. If you start, if you place on that leaderboard and you see every day has an individual leaderboard along with the final leaderboard at the end, you get to see your name on the leaderboard. So there's even more incentive uh, to uh, to play the game there. So that when you take the tour and you go by the command center wall, you can say, "Yep." That's me right there. And uh, we had several people, you know, take their picture, point to their name right there on the command center wall. But uh, a great time. But just just to just to make it fun there, uh, we do put the names up there on the wall. But uh, value to the tour is that at the, the the individuals that are that are doing this, you want to look over the shoulder uh, of the individual that's uh, that's monitoring the the resources right there, seeing the seat count, seeing the labs there and say, hey, what does that mean? Or what are you watching there? What's important to you? What metrics do you do you look for? This is your opportunity.
That's awesome. This is just like you guys have more feature to your Disney World ride than uh, everybody else. But then I talked to everybody else and everybody else has great features too. William Lamb and his hands-on lab session. That's going to be popular. Just everything that can be done. It's like, you know, if this is your career, if you're in IT, this is the place to come and be because there's just so much going on. The second question I had, um, then I'll give it back to Matt for any final thoughts as we come up to the top of the hour here pretty soon, uh, is on the Tanzu space, right? And the Tanzu HOLs, right? Like Tanzu and Kubernetes is it's just wild, crazy, you know, big collection of third party apps and grids and non grids, and the vocabulary is crazy. Um, have you seen an expansion of the labs? Or are you still just focusing on getting Tanzu running uh, in, on your vSphere environment? Where, where has that led to these days? We do have an expansion of Tanzu because that's what we're being asked for. Uh, we still have individuals that say, look, I've heard about Kubernetes. I, I just I just need you to level set me and kind of bring me up to speed. Get, tell me tell me what this is there. And we can we can definitely accommodate that uh, with the labs this year, kind of a one-on-one, take you through that. But then what's the next level? After I deploy my hello world container, you know, what's the next thing I need to learn about this to kind of learn those concepts? We have that there as well. However, um, one of the other things to remember is that taking place around the same time as the Spring One conference. So the infrastructure uh, and individuals aren't the only people in the hallway. We're going to have developers, those that are actually building applications around too. And we're going to have some content that's going to kind of blur the lines between that. It's going to be something that uh, a application developer uh, could appreciate along with the infrastructure team beside them. So we're recognizing uh, that uh, these two these two teams, they need to work together really to be successful. And everybody needs to have an understanding of the fundamentals that the other team works with. The infrastructure team has to understand how applications are being delivered through with Kubernetes. They need to understand how that works on the vSphere. And then vice versa, those that are developing container-based applications benefit greatly from understanding how the infrastructure is going to react to what they deploy there and how to best uh, best use that and, and efficiently use that. So we will have expert-led workshops and hand, new hands-on labs. It's new content, not just updating the old labs, but brand new content that's, uh, that's going to really help those that need that deeper dive, get that deeper dive. And again, we have the experts in the room too. Yeah. We have 96 new lab titles in work in progress right now. So we're definitely bringing the new content this year. Matt, what do you think? So Kelly, to that 96 new titles, if you will, that are out there, if an individual outside of the Explore event would want to follow along um, of new material or new um, you know, Odyssey uh, quests that are out there. Is there a, you know, a Twitter feed, uh, a LinkedIn, uh, a VMware blog site that you guys uh, publish throughout the year as far as, you know, developments for either Odyssey or hands-on labs in general so that, you know, our community listeners that are out there um, can keep track of, of where progress is coming and what new labs are available? Absolutely. Probably best to follow Twitter at VMWHOL. We post um, links to all of our blogs on there. And that's where blogs are typically where we deep dive into what new labs are being released and when uh, we do now have a TikTok. And I don't have that handle, but I'm sure you could find it if you look for VMware Hands on Labs. Um, and we are on Instagram. But Twitter is probably the easiest one, VMWHOL. And uh, yeah, we do definitely let our users know when new labs are coming out. And the labs that we're debuting at Explore, um, they will be releasing two to three weeks, usually after the event, we release them. And there, there may be some new ones for Barcelona, which would release after that show as well. But if you want to be the first one to try the labs, you got to come to the show. Nice. Fantastic. And uh, final, uh, final comments uh, here. Um, Europe is coming up. I'm assuming that uh, we're going to replicate this in Europe uh, as well. And then do you guys get instructors that like have a, a variety of languages to help some of the Europeans that come in that might not be strong in any particular in, in English? I'm just wondering, I don't know if that ever happens or not, but I thought I would ask that. 
We do. We at the U.S. show, we um, typically have someone that will speak Japanese. I know they're coming back this year just in case someone has questions. And then at the Europe show, we do try and cover all of the languages. So there are uh, instructors and lab staff on the on the floor who can help if there are questions um, and people aren't comfortable mm -hmm. in English. And David, when we go to Europe, do you switch uh, cloud providers and you know migrate workloads over into a European cloud from AWS? Is that uh, assume how you're doing that? Yeah, we any any clouds that are physically closer to that event are going to have the lowest latency. Those are going to be our preferred clouds. So uh, for for that uh, that reason and others. Uh, availability of clouds as well. Sometimes uh, our, our clouds go under, uh, you know, some some maintenance uh, window or something like that. So we're ready to switch over to something else if we need to, as well. But yeah, we we do uh, we do prefer closer geographies as the show moves. We do have a data center in Amsterdam that's typically used to help augment the show in Barcelona. Fantastic. Well, I'm excited. Um, we are we do live stream on youtube.com slash vbarbecue. So if people want to look at what Kelly and David look like so they can recognize them, if they see them, go over to vbarbecue on YouTube, youtube.com slash vbarbecue, V-B-A-R-B-E-C-U-E. -E. Uh, and uh, that's where we live stream. And uh, we'll ask both of you, Kelly, do you do barbecue? And uh, if you do, what's your favorite thing to make? Do you slow? cook do you, do you use charcoal do you use gas or do you just go to a local barbecue place i do like to barbecue i'm the one who barbecues in our house and i think my favorite is pork ribs oh yeah of course yeah anything like that yeah, yeah don't care how the barbecue is as long as they're cooked <laughs> all right there you go david same question so I am in Dallas, Texas, and I grew up in Texas. So barbecue is uh, is very divisive and comforting all at the same time. <laughs> but I'd say for me, uh, if, if it's me, it's the burnt ends uh, from brisket at Salt Lake Barbecue outside of Austin. Uh, I'm, I'm, I like those burnt ends, you know, a little on the fatty side, chop it up there. That's uh, that's me. You know, there is, uh, I've been to Salt Lake and uh, I don't think I've had the burnt ends, but I have been to Salt Lake, nice place. Austin, uh, been to Mr. Stubbs downtown. Been there, some 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 classic barbecues. Of course, I'm, uh, I'm partial to Central California where we do rubs and, you know, there's the battle between uh, beef from Central California and the Texas barbecues. So... Always a fun rivalry there, but uh, Austin certainly. I went to Austin one time and I ate so much barbecue, I didn't want to eat barbecue for another month right after that. Then you really, did it right. There's a lot of places there, including, yep, Salt Lake. All right, well, thanks a lot for both of you taking time off during your lunchtime, or at least my lunchtime in California to be here. And thanks for all the hard work on HOL and Odyssey and uh, all of the instructor led lab so appreciate all of that um can't wait to see you in vegas and anybody else that shows up say hello to david and kelly thanks a lot for being here um Eric. matt any final words we'll see you at the show if you haven't got registered so uh again the dates august 21st through 24th i know that there is some very few limited hotel rooms available in that block discount that, that are still out there. I think the advertised cutoff date was last Friday, but there may be you know, a, a couple of rooms left and most certainly uh, get yourself registered with an Explorer Pass so that you can experience the hands-on labs and the Odyssey tournament. Yeah. All right, everybody have a great rest of your week and get some barbecue and we'll be back again Wednesday, 12 to one. See you then.